This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. This message is brought to you by How Much Bench.net, the Slingshot, and the only freaking strength magazine in the world, thepowermagazine.com. That's Chris Duffin right there, former world record holder of the 220 pound weight class squat. He did a an 881 pound squat, and here today we are uh, working on. Uh, fixing his technique up for the bench press. Uh, Sam Bird is the crazy son bitch who broke the record with a 915 pound squat and Chris is looking to compete pretty soon uh, to try to get that record back. But we need to work on the bench um, because it's um, kind of a place where Chris needs the most work I would say. He, you know, he de he's proficient at deadlifting. Um, I'm not sure what his best contest uh, deadlift is but there's a video of him deadlifting uh, 900 pounds for two reps uh, in, in a training session. He is wearing straps and stuff like that, but he's got an extremely strong lower back, extremely strong legs and lower body, and so now we're just trying to work on some particular technique uh, to fancy up his bench press a little bit. Here we got our, my boy Marcus. Marcus uh, is probably going to be closing in on a 500-pound bench uh, within the next few months. Um, he's been making a lot of progress. He's got good form on the bench and good technique along with uh, discipline uh, is what's going to help transfer over into power. You're going to have to have a lot of consistency uh, with a similar technique. Uh, here I am talking to Chris about wearing the belt a little higher. Uh, for those of you that have never tried wearing the belt higher um, on a squat, <coughs> bench or deadlift, I strongly suggest uh, you give it a shot. So on the bench press it feels amazing because it just kind of helps capture that area of the back that gets so tight when you're trying to arch in the bench press. So some of the things we're working with um, with Chris here is we're trying to have him pull the weights kind of down and in. I'm talking to him about it here. I'm mentioning to him right here when I'm pointing at my hand about gay wrist. He has uh, alternative lifestyle wrist going on uh, and his wrists are pointing backwards. So if you think about if you were to throw a punch at somebody, uh, you'd want that wrist to be nice and straight. You want your fist uh, to be in alignment with your wrist. You want your wrist to be in alignment with your elbows. And you want everything to be in alignment ultimately with the barbell so you can shove and press at the same time. Uh, it's my opinion that when you do a contest bench press, the way to take advantage of it the most is that you're doing kind of a combination of a bench press and a shove, uh, which you're going to kind of see me perform here. Uh, regular standard bench press is a little bit more elbows out and you're trying to get some chest. There's a combination right there of a with 405 with a uh, kind of a press and a shove. And Marcus uh, kind of follows suit with a similar technique. And here's another angle of it. It was a really good workout on this day, even though uh, we were all beat up. Uh, we were doing a lot of different things. You can see Mr. Robot Pants all the way to the right there, uh, working on some homework in the background, working on becoming a doctor. But uh, this ended up being a good workout. We, uh, we really were slaughtering ourselves on this day. This is 455 pounds right here by myself, chucking it around for two reps. Shoulders banged up, chest is banged up, everything's banged up. We were training hard while Chris was here, and uh, ever since uh, Omar Asmuffin came here a while back, we've been uh, hammering it hard um, with, with the weights, that is. Uh, here goes Chris with a 455, working on having him push his uh, stomach against the belt. Let's see how it goes. Form is much improved right there. That was, uh, that was fairly textbook. Um, but still, he's going to have to still work on kind of pulling the weights in at the bottom. Uh, during the pause of a bench press, uh, in, a, in a competition, in a powerlifting meet, uh, you have a, a press command. They make you pause the weight uh, for a little bit. And it's important that while they're doing that, you're actively uh, still uh, ready, uh, still in a great position, or even getting yourself into a better position, I should say, uh, to bench press. And you can do that by kind of flexing... Uh, your lats and pulling the weight in and almost through your body and then after that you're going to press uh, strongly and aggressively uh, with everything that you got. Jeremy Hornstra is really uh, good at it. You see there Chris didn't take the weight out of the rack with his lats, he pushed it up straight. <clears throat> Struggled with that one a little bit, the weight's kind of drifted on him. He's pressed more than that before in training um, but it's just going to be, again, it's going to be a matter of him. Uh, 
working on consistency and just constantly moving these uh, weights in the, in the way that we uh, went over. Also, too, something to keep in mind, no matter how good a coach is, uh, it's going to come down to uh, you taking the advice of the coach, you being open-minded enough to take advice from that coach, but also, on top of that, you have to um, keep in mind what works for you. So Chris is going to have to take a combination of what I told him, and whatever the hell it is that works well for him, he's going to have to mesh the two together. That's ultimately what's going to be uh, the best thing for your form, your technique, your training style, and so on. Marcus with a good strong 455 there. He had something cramp up on him, something nearly blew out, but uh, he was still able to press, press, press through on that. He lost a little weight recently. Uh, I think his best, uh, Marcus's best bench, I think might be around 475. Um, it's kind of the constant battle at super training is that you want to, uh, you know, you want to be strong, but you don't want to get too fat. And uh, so sometimes guys will go up and down in weight. Here I go with five plates. Guys will go up and down in weight to try to, uh, you know, manipulate their strength in different weight classes and stuff as well. <clears throat> this is the technique I'm talking about. You want to try to pull those weights down and in. My elbows could be in a little bit better. But that last one really gives you an example of how it should be done. Even though it got a little hairy, got a little sloppy. When you're handling heavy weights, uh, things are not going to look perfect. They're going to look, they're going to look chaotic, and they're going to look dangerous. Look at that! You're off the team shirt. That's amazing. Look at how fat my face is. It's awesome. Why is my face so fat? And why is anybody listening to this? That that's the main that's the main question you got to ask yourself. I always say that if you guys are watching this, that you have no lives, and if you're not watching this, then you have no life. So now we're going to work on some rest pause, which I blatantly stole uh, from Josh Bryant. I have no trouble admitting that uh, out loud. No trouble admitting that on the interwebs. So rest pause. That is one set of two repetitions. Now he's going to rest approximately 15 seconds here because these weights are fairly light for him. Uh, maybe more like 30 seconds because we're fat and because we're lazy. Or at least I'm fat and lazy. Chris is actually pretty um, in pretty damn good shape. Um, so the reason why I wanted him to switch to this is because, you know, the great Vince Lombardi once said that fatigue makes cowards of us all. And Chris, by no means, is a coward. And he's by no means uh, fatigued in this state. Uh, but as it relates to that quote, um, what we're trying to do is when when you're up against it and when things aren't going your way, uh, and if you start to get tired, your will to win, your will to get better, your drive to continue to be the best, sometimes gets hammered down a little bit. And I feel sometimes uh, when guys aren't good at a particular lift, they need a boost of confidence, and they also need to kind of fight through. they got to fight for their new PR. they got to try something different that they've never tried before. So that's exactly what we're doing here with Chris. That was, uh, that was one round right there of rest pause. That was three separate sets done with 30 seconds rest in between. <clears throat> and uh, now we're going to load him up again. I had him do uh, many, many sets of this. Basically just had him keep going until he dies. But typically the way that rest pause is done, it's done in... Uh, three, it's done for three sets um, of two repetitions, and that's one round. Uh, in between those sets, you have 30 to 45 seconds rest approximately. Uh, and then usually you're going to do uh, anywhere between one to three rounds, depending on, uh, depending on how much volume you, you want to hit. Three rounds of rest pause is just death. can be pretty brutal. And adding bands or chains to it uh, makes it that much more more difficult. But, uh, you know, back to Chris and, and the reason why we selected rest pause for him. I want him to fight for his technique and to fight for his form, um, but also without really thinking about it. And that's what rest pause will do for you because you are, yeah, well, you might be resting, but you're only resting for a few seconds. So you're going to get very fatigued. And when you're fatigued and you're able to still keep your form intact, there you can see how jacked Chris is right there. When you're fatigued uh, and your form is um, <clears throat> your form is uh, starting to go, but you have to st you're still able to fight through it and hold your form. That's uh, when your technique is going to be sound and perfect the way that you need it to be. Here's Chris explaining a bunch of shit to me about shoulder mobility. I have no idea what he's talking about right now. 
So here I am giving Chris a, uh, a, a, an exercise. Uh, I have trouble pressing weights uh, directly over my fat head, and uh, so does he. So we are going to do uh, a technique that I kind of made up for myself. I know other people have used this before. I've seen it on the interwebs. I'm, I'm not the inventor of this exercise by any means. Um, but basically, you can see he's able to push forward and still work his shoulders. Chris uh, uh, said that um, you know he doesn't have the front delts that he wants to be able to hold on to the big weights and be able to press the big weights, so he wants to be able to uh, make his shoulders bigger. And I gave him a few recipes that I think will really help him. Uh, one thing uh, that you can do whenever you have a weak muscle or weak muscle group is that you could um, utilize the methods of bodybuilders and simply uh, pre-fatigue the muscle so he could do something like side laterals before he started the pressing movement. And that way, even if he can't press that well, or even if there's pain in the shoulders during pressing, uh, he'll also be using uh, quite a bit of less, quite a bit of less weight uh, than normal because he pre-fatigued the muscle with either lateral raises or front raises or what have you. Strength is never a weakness, and that is it from supertraining.tv. All right, so we just uh, finished up a bench session. I was trying to do a couple things with Chris. Struggles in the bench press a little bit, trying to refine his technique and uh, throw some new things at him. So a lot of times when you're trying to learn something new, uh, especially when you're trying to go heavy, uh, the two don't always go hand in hand. So we got you up around a 475, we did a 455 bench. And then the 475 is where you're kind of stalling out, getting mm -hmm. a little tired. Uh, we're trying a couple different things with him for today. And I kind of left him with a few things for him to work on. Uh, a couple things I thought would be effective. Uh, one thing would be uh, some rest pause. Uh, that was given to me by uh, uh, Josh Bryant, who I think is a great, a great coach and has coached many lifters to a 600-pound bench. I think with the size and the mass that Chris has and the strength that he possesses in his upper back, I believe he can be a 525, 550 pound bencher approximately. Uh, it's just going to take him a little bit of time. Uh, how was it trying to adapt to some of that different uh, technique I was showing you today? He said, even though I kind of stalled her out for around 475, it actually felt really good. I mean, today's Wednesday and Monday I was benching. Monday's my heavy bench day. We deadlifted yesterday, um, which I did quite a bit. It's been and a then, lifting uh, party since he got here. Yeah, so, uh, so I was actually really pleased. Um, I felt the engagement and things that. Uh, the changes that Mark suggested, and honestly, I felt I could have hit the 495 for several singles today uh, right. if I wasn't just in such a fatigue state at the, at the mo right. moment. And those you know, rest pauses felt great, too. Yeah, rest pause is going to allow you to, uh, or it's going to force you to try to stay in a good position uh, as your body's getting fatigued. It's also going to give you uh, multiple uh, first repetitions, which Chris uh, talked to me about uh, on the squat, uh, doing six sets of two, five sets of two. Uh, you've talked a lot about adding sets uh, rather than just adding weight or even adding, uh, or adding repetitions. It's very important as a power lifter uh, to achieve that top end strength that you get the first repetition right. And so uh, with something like rest pause where you do uh, three or four rounds of uh, doubles with about 30 seconds rest in between, depending on the protocol, uh, it really gives you a shot at those first reps. Not only does it do that, but you have uh, first reps uh, in a fatigued state, as you felt. 365 yes, yeah. started to be challenging, right? Yep. So there's some of the tips for the day. Uh, we also had him uh, kind of pulling the weight into himself, uh, resting the bar uh, on, on, his, uh, on his sternum a little bit before he went and, and pressed and shoved into it. Uh, the one thing that to keep in mind uh, when you're trying something like that is you have to stay connected to the bar. You're going to see some guys, they'll, they'll get the weight out, and it's a race to the bottom. Uh, and then they're dropping the weight uh, twice as fast as they are pressing it. Uh, once you get into that uh, state, then, then you're, uh, you're heading in the wrong direction. That's not what you're looking for. Even if you are capable of pressing something substantial that way, that's not really what we're after. You do want to try to bring the weights down aggressively. You want to try to bring them down uh, fast, but you have to be under control. And as you're bringing those weights down, as we were talking with you, if we can get Chris to engage his lats, which is a huge uh, part of his uh, big deadlift and his big squat, his world record squat. Uh, if we can get him to engage his lats uh, on the bench press, uh, there's, uh, there's really no upper limit for you. So I think if we uh, start to add in some of that stuff that uh, I showed you, I think you'll be on your way, buddy. All right, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. So yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, 
And that's it from supertraining.tv.